Hello again and welcome. You can see I've got the prototype 121GW out again. There's a member up on the EEV blog that goes by Dr. Frank. He had recently posted some data where he used a 1.9 mega ohm resistor along with the current release of the 121GW. He shows a plot where he's looking at the noise of the meter. And I became quite interested in that because this meter that David supplied to me, again, this is not the current production, and this meter's been damaged three times now. I've also modified the hardware of this meter, but I never remembered this meter being that noisy. So I ran a bunch of tests, basically showing that the meter was very stable. So to make a long story short, what ends up happening is I installed the most recent version, and at that time it was 1.22, and sure enough, everything goes to hell. So I ended up running a whole bunch of tests after that. I posted all that data up on the EV blog site. So if you want to go back and review that, that information is available. There isn't really anything special about what I've been doing. Unfortunately, this meter does not have the Bluetooth interface. Uh, so basically, I'm logging to the SD card. I'm pulling this in and out. Unfortunately, my fingers are pretty big, so I can't easily grab this card. You can see I don't have long fingernails. So I'll use a pair of needle nose pliers because I didn't want to crack the card. One time I dropped the card, it fell down inside of the meter. So I had to remove the back case again to get the card out. Last time I had it apart, I also noticed I've cracked that connector now. So if you're logging using the SD card, be aware of that and try to be careful with it. One of the problems I see logging with this card is since I've started this testing, I run it without the back cover. Because I know I got to get the card out, you know. So if I were logging some kind of high energy source, uh, this could be very dangerous or any kind of high voltage, you know, because you've got all this area here exposed. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of a bad setup in my opinion to even be logging this way. As I understand it, they are not going to have the provisions to offload this card using Bluetooth. I basically thought you'd have the card installed and that would be the end of the story. You just leave the meter buttoned up and you do everything through the Bluetooth interface, but unfortunately that's not the case. So when I started this testing, I basically wanted to replicate what Dr. Frank had done. So what I did is I made a series parallel combination of resistors to come up with the 1.9 mega ohms. I used some KDAC TK parts. There's about five of these in here. These are thermally glued together on a piece of copper bar, which is then installed in this Pyropel case, and then that's encased with aluminum foil. Uh, these parts have a temperature coefficient of 10 ppm so I thought these will definitely be more than stable enough to see what's going on with the meter and ever since then I've been testing with the same set of resistors I don't use clip leads at all this pack just basically plugs directly into the meter like so. I've also used the same set of batteries throughout this test these are just envelopes these are a nickel metal hydride so when I've been running these tests, I basically just have the meter sitting out in the middle of my table. I install the resistor. I place the meter into its resistance mode. And I just hit the mem. And I start recording the data. I have done tests where I've allowed the meter to warm up. It seems this meter drifts for about 10 minutes before it's stable. You know, I've had the back cover off of this. And I took my soldering iron and I just kind of swept around the meter. And it appears that the Hycon chip is what's causing all that drift. Now to be clear, when I'm putting the iron on that part, I can't even detect that there's a temperature change with my finger. So it's not like I'm superheating the parts or anything. It's actually still basically at room temperature when I'm running that test. I also checked the resistors in the divider network. There is some effect, but again, the majority of the drift seems to be caused by the chipset that they chose. So again, when I'm running these tests, I've been trying to basically keep everything very controlled. So I don't want to change anything except for the firmware. So this is looking at some of the data that I've collected. This plot that I'm showing you right here is my Hewlett Packard 34401A. Now you can see there's a little bit of drift. Basically what I did is I allowed the meter to warm up for about 15 minutes. That's the 15WU warm up. And this is also open air, meaning I hadn't yet made that Pyropel case for our resistor network. So this is after allowing the meter to warm up for two hours, and I've gone ahead and I've encased that resistor into Pyropel. Let's just go ahead and we'll zoom in vertically. So again, we're looking at basically a 1.9 mega ohm resistor. You can see the meter is reading 1.9000. 
and you can see it's basically flat after the meter was allowed to warm up uh, so again I'm saying the test setup itself as far as using this resistor is quite stable so let's go ahead and we'll look at some of the other meters so let's start by looking at our SEM DT9939. Again, I paid about $130 for this meter. Again, it's quite flat. This is after a 10 minute warm up. But if you look at the peak to peak noise off of this meter, you can see it's quite a bit worse than our HP meter. Let's have a look at our UT61E. So you can see it has a little bit of a downward drift. Let's uh, deselect our SEM meter. Of course, the UT61E doesn't have near the resolution of our HP meter. But you can see this is one step is essentially two divisions. And you can see we're basically three counts of noise, I guess, peak to peak. But typically it's within one count. So let's go ahead and we'll look at the UT181A. Again, you can see it's basically within a count. So again, the noise on these two meters quite a bit better than what the SEM meter is. So again, here's our UT61E in green, the 181A in blue. Up here is our SEM meter. And you can see the noise is quite a bit lower on these two meters. If you look at the two meters, basically I turn these on from a cold start where I allowed this one to warm up for 10 minutes. And you can see both meters do have some drift, but they're basically flat. So let's have a look at our UEI prototype meter. Again, this is the 121GW. And this is the way the meter was supplied originally. So this has the original firmware. I don't know what the version is. It's old enough that when you turn the meter on, it doesn't display a version number. But again, the noise on this is basically one count. You can see a slight bit of drift, but it's nothing unusual. Let's have a look at our Goss and Metrowatt again. This is the M248B. This meter is 300,000 counts. And again, I've allowed it to warm up for 10 minutes. But you can see it's about the closest thing I have to an actual bench meter that fits in the palm of your hand. Of course, the meter is quite large, but it is battery operated and portable. I made a shield for the meter out of netic material. I've also added some copper and some aluminum foil to the face and the sides of the meter to try to make it less sensitive to the proximity of my hand. Again, the meter is just basically sensitive to RF and it's also sensitive to static fields. So let's have a look at some of the other data. This again is looking at the meter the way that it was supplied to me. And again, you can see there's a little bit of drift as I power up the meter. So this is looking at after I had installed version 1.22 of the firmware. And you can see the peak-to-peak -peak noise is quite a bit higher. So David sent me a couple of versions of firmware that were prior to version 1.0. So I took the oldest version of the two he sent me. I installed that into the meter. And you can see, basically, the noise is back to one count. This is what I would have expected. So then I installed version 1.0. And again, you can see it's basically dead on with what the version was that David sent me. Now keep in mind, when this meter was originally supplied to me, it had this unknown firmware. Now when I installed 1.22, it turns out that the calibration was not correct at all. So they had actually changed something in the firmware that prevented me from using the original calibrations that the meter was supplied with. So I ended up having to go back and I completely realign this meter. But luckily for me, it appears that all the versions of the firmware that I'm now working with all use the same calibrations. So I haven't any more problems with that, but be aware that the alignment for this blue trace where I originally received it and all the other traces is different. It's actually a little bit tighter now that I've realigned it. So let's go ahead and look at the version 1.02. And you can see something's happening. It almost has some kind of a very predictable frequency in our measurement. And again, I can't explain this. This isn't anything in my test setup. But let's go ahead again and we'll enable the 1.22. And you can see there's this progression where the noise seems to be getting worse. So there's another member on the EEV blog site who has been basically disassembling the code. As I understand it, what they've done is they've taken the sampling methods of 1.0 and they've gone ahead and patched that into version 1.02. This is the first set of data I ran, and again, it's very similar. So then what ends up happening, of course, UEI releases 1.25. So I decided to go ahead and install it, and this is the result. So you can see, at least from my meter, it looks like the peak-to-peak -peak noise is 
significantly higher than any other version of the firmware that I've looked at. Let's go ahead and zoom out. These areas here, this is where I'm taking a tape eraser and I'm bringing it up by the meter and I'm trying to see if the meter is affected by the 50 or 60 Hertz. And of course it is. Uh, these other areas here, it's just basically background noise the way I'm normally running the meter. So right after running these tests, what I did is I repeated the test using the patch version of 1.02. So let's go ahead and enable that. Let me just shut everything else here off. So again, this is on two separate days. This is the original data that I collected, and this is the data that I collected right after running the 125 data. The two are basically back to one count of noise. So at least it seems to be reproducible, and it seems to have something to do with the firmware. The other point I'd like to make is down in the very tail end of this, let me just go ahead and zoom out on the X scale. So the very tail end down in here, I've taken the tape eraser and I've turned that on and I've swept it around the meter and you can see there's basically no effect. Now I did that test initially when I was collecting data with the original firmware and again I didn't see any effects with this firmware as well. Whatever they're doing, at least as far as that 50-60 hertz rejection, that also seems to be firmware related. So after all this testing, uh, Frank had again asked if I was looking at the displayed data or if I was always looking at the log data. Of course, these sweeps take 40 minutes to run, and you know I'm not going to sit there and look at the display while it's running. So when it's done, I just basically offload the data and plot it. So I thought while I had the 1.02 software installed, I would just go ahead and set the camera up real quick and run a sweep, and then go ahead and install the 125 and run another quick sweep and collect some data while I'm actually videotaping it. So I went ahead and did that and you can see that the meter was quite unstable. And of course I didn't collect any data for that 125. So I thought what I'd do is just go ahead and repeat the full test where I do the 40 minute sweep. And I videotape that entire set of data. It's uncut. Of course the batteries in the camera had died during the middle of that, but I caught it pretty quick. So again, you'll just see me change out the batteries, but uh, the meter continued to collect the data during that time.
So again, once all that data had been collected, I went ahead and plotted that, and that's this data here. Again, let me turn off our first set. Again, you can see it's quite noisy. And let's have a look at our 1.22. And again, let's compare that against 1.0. Again, I can't explain the reason for this. I'm just basically running these tests and collecting the data, and I can show you what I've done, but beyond that, I'm afraid uh, there's not much else I can do. Well, I think that's going to be it for this video. Again, if you supported the Kickstarter and you have one of the initial meters, again, keep in mind, this is a prototype meter. It may not behave at all like the meter that you actually have. I don't have access to the latest version of the hardware, so I'm just running these tests on this prototype meter, and there very well could be some reason that this particular meter behaves the way it does. Of course, UEI did release that 1.25 that I've just demonstrated. Again, you can see it's worse now than what it's ever been. So I don't hold out a lot of hope that they have the ability to actually test their own firmware as they release it. I would have expected them to have some way to do some kind of regression test well, I think that's going to be it. Till the next video. Later.